Which revolutionary took a very peculiar seat at the signing of the Declaration of Independence? Hi Founder fans, Jason here, and today we'll be discussing William Ellery. Now William Ellery was a Rhode Island man who had worked for the first half of his life as a merchant and at about 43 years old changed careers and became a lawyer. He had also served as clerk on the Colonial Assembly and served as a customs agent. More importantly, he was an early and active member of the colony's Sons of Liberty. Now, Rhode Island took the Continental Congress very seriously. The two delegates they sent were Stephen Hopkins and Samuel Ward, both of whom were former governors and former Chief Justices of the Supreme Court. Actually, Samuel Ward was still Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. So, when Ward passed away in early 1776, well, Rhode Island wanted to select someone they could trust with this, what they considered, a very important position. And that man was William Ellery. He went and joined Stephen Hopkins as the two delegates from Rhode Island at the Continental Congress. And while he was there, well, they debated and passed the Declaration of Independence. William Ellery decided to take a very interesting seat. Instead of just staying in his regular seat and going up when it was his turn to sign like everyone else did, he sat next to Charles Thompson, the Secretary of the Continental Congress, up in the front of the room. And uh, founder biographer Charles Augustus Goodrich, uh, I'd like to quote him here. He said, He placed himself beside Secretary Thompson so he might see as they looked as they put their names to their death warrant. In other words, he wanted to watch these gentlemen sign their lives away. And he wanted to make sure that everyone was understood the gravity of the situation. And it seems that, for the most part, they very much did. I do want to note here that Ellery's name is neither at the beginning nor the end of the Declaration of Independence. So I would have to presume that when it was his turn to sign, he got up, walked around to the other side of the table, signed it, walked back around, and sat back down. Either way, this is by far the most interesting part of William Ellery's life, but not necessarily the most important. Uh, he continued to serve. He actually sat in the Continental Congress for the duration of the war, including uh, putting his signature to the Articles of Confederation, the United States' first government, which makes him one of the few, the select few founders who actually signed two of the, ma of the nation's four major founding documents. He would go on to go back to Rhode Island, take up his private practice, but when the Constitution was created and George Washington became president, Washington chose Ellery as the first customs collector, the first federal customs collector at the port at uh, uh, um, Newport. I'm sorry, I almost said Newburgh. At the, por the port in Newport, which was a very important port for the United States and especially the colony of Rhode Island at the time. And he was not only the first customs collector in Newport, he would serve that position for the rest of his life, which ended up being 30 years. He lived until the 1820s and passed away at the age of 92. So we're going to keep it short and sweet today. That's the story of William Ellery and his uh, fascinating method of witnessing history. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit like. Uh, if you're new here, definitely hit subscribe. Put out videos like this five days a week. And on Saturdays, aka tomorrow at 3 o'clock, I will be doing a live video where I will discuss the seven articles I published for my website, founderoftheday.com, in the last week. We're going to talk about a lot of fun founders, uh, Whiskey Rebellion, uh, some Federalist Papers, um, other things that are eluding me right now. But thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to bringing you another founder on Monday.